the very first question you need to ask yourself is why do you need a laptop? What's the purpose? And your answer would lead you to one of three kinds of laptops, either a Chromebook or a Windows 10 laptop or an Apple laptop. If you're looking to just browse the internet or use some cloud-based apps and you're on a really tight budget, then Chromebooks would be the way to go. But let's say you already have the iPhone or the iPad and you want to use iMessages, iCloud, you want to use AirDrop and you've got the budget, then the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro are really good options to consider. But for majority of you, Windows 10 laptops would be the way to go because there's just so much more variety to choose from and that's where this video acts as a guide. Now there are four things to think about primarily when purchasing a laptop. You've got to look at the storage type, the processor, the RAM and the graphics and these four things alone form majority of your experience with the laptop. It's not the size, the color, the weight, those things are secondary. But whether your laptop can perform and do the things that you purchased it for is going to be important. All right, let's talk about these four things now. So first is storage. It's capacity. How much can you store in your laptop? And it's measured in gigabytes or terabytes. And no matter what you're buying your laptop for, make sure it has an SSD and not an HDD. SSDs are just a lot faster. They're responsible for how fast your computer boots up or how quickly an app or a game launches, how quickly you're able to search through multiple files or copy and paste files at really high speeds. And so when you're looking at specs, there could be various ways in which it's written. It could be solid state drive, it could say SSD, it could say M2 NVMe SSD, it could say hybrid storage SSD. The good news is that most laptops today are sold with an SSD by default. But the bad news is that SSDs are expensive and that's why they come in small storage capacities like 256 gigs or 512 gigs. Really high-end laptops, one terabyte. But here's what you can do. Just buy an external hard disk drive or you know, use cloud storage. They're much cheaper now and you can store everything that's extra that you don't need immediately. Store them there and then you can just access later. Next is processor and what processor or CPU to go with depends on what you really need your laptop for. It's the heart of your laptop. And guys, before I talk about this, there are two manufacturers, Intel and AMD. I'll focus on Intel just because there are more options with Intel and it'll just appeal to more of you. Now, when deciding which processor to go with, look out for three things. The series, that is whether it's in core i3, i5 or i7 or even i9. The generation, whether it's 10 gen or 11 gen and the clock speed. Now, don't fret, it's really simple stuff. First of all, make sure that you're either getting a 10 gen or an 11 gen processor, preferably 11 gen because it's more recent. Next, you wanna decide between core i3, i5, i7 or i9. i3 and i5s are good if you're just going to be using a laptop for web browsing, streaming videos or for Microsoft Office apps. The key difference is that Core i5 laptops would be faster and can multitask better. So if you plan on having multiple Chrome tabs open, then you're working on a PowerPoint file while a Word document is also open and you're listening to music in the background, the Core i5 will be able to manage all of that. The Core i3 will definitely struggle. Now, what you can't do with these processors, the i3 and the i5, is rely on them for heavy or intense use of apps like Premiere Pro or uh, After Effects or Illustrator or even gaming. I mean, they'll work, but not smoothly. And that's when Core i7 comes into picture. So if you're looking at using a laptop for creative work or intense multitasking or gaming, Core i7 would be the way to go. And lastly, not all Core i3, i5 or i7 processors are the same. Some are fast and some are faster. And a very quick and easy way to check that would be, let's say you're comparing laptops. Copy the model number of the processor and go to Google and search for clock speed of that processor. You can just paste that model number and Google will throw up the uh, clock speed. 4.2 gigahertz is quite fast actually, but since you're comparing, you can take the other model number, paste that and see if it's higher. Generally, higher is better, but do mind that this only holds true if you're comparing two processors that belong to the same generation and to the same series. If you look at Pentium or Celeron written anywhere, just run away. I mean, don't get those computers They're really slow and really old, not the way to go. All right, next is RAM, and it's probably the simplest one. Usually, it's more the merrier. So RAM is what makes more and more apps on your computer run simultaneously without any issues. So the more RAM you have, the smoother it is for you to run multiple apps simultaneously. Now, if you have a Core i3 processor powered laptop, eight gigs of RAM is sufficient. But if your laptop is running on Core i5 or i7 processors, and I'm assuming that you'll be running multiple apps simultaneously, quite a few of them would be intense. Then I think 16 gigs of RAM is good. I mean, it's, it provides for good buffer in the future 
and it definitely future proofs your device. And lastly, graphics. The good news is that most new laptops that feature Intel processors, they now come with integrated graphics. If you plan on doing video editing or heavy illustration work or running multiple displays together, you're gonna need a dedicated graphics card. And hey, if you want to consider anything that's between serious to high-end professional work, whether it's in the field of gaming or video editing or After Effects or illustration, then you're gonna have to stick with bigger and more powerful graphic cards inside your laptop. So those two sets lie right over here. And you know, that's pretty much it actually. Now I understand it can all be very overwhelming. So I've summarized everything that I've talked about in a nice, easy to understand chart. Now, this is just a good generalization and this would help you in narrowing down your choices, but definitely reach out to an expert or to a professional and let them know what you really want to get done from your laptop and they'll help you with the right model, with the right specifications and everything else. And hey, if you've got a question for me, um, just drop it in the comment section below. Let me know what's your purpose uh, with the laptop and what specs you're looking at. Don't leave me with any modern numbers. I won't be able to look it up on the internet for all of you, right? So just quick questions and uh, I'll definitely help you out. Now, one thing that I haven't talked about is personal constraints and personal preferences. Constraints are things that you must keep in mind before purchasing a laptop because, you know, your nature of work requires you to have certain things like a 4K display. It could be having certain ports like LAN and HDMI is a must. Maybe you want a 17 inch screen or a 15 inch screen. Uh, you know, you want a keyboard that has a number pad, for example. So these could be constraints and they're all valid constraints. But all of these factors can really shorten the available laptops for you. Try not to get these factors compromise on the performance piece. Almost all of this can be achieved using extra peripherals or accessories. You know, you can always buy an additional monitor, which is 4K and plug it in. You can always buy a number pad keyboard separately and use it, you know, connect it using USB. You can always buy more ports with a Type-C adapter. And then there are personal preferences, things like color, size, and weight. I mean, I've seen people pick inferior laptops, inferior performing laptops, because it was available in the color that they wanted, and then listen to them complain about how it doesn't work or doesn't get the job done. So when you bring in all these personal preferences as factors, your list narrows down even further. And you know, the chances of you compromising on the performance of the laptop increases significantly. Again, guys, most things, you know, you can always have a nice skin on a laptop and get the color you want, right? So there are, there are ways to work around your personal preferences and constraints, but don't let that get in the way uh, of choosing your laptop. Just, just bone it down to absolute essentials and go with it. All right, I hope this was all very helpful to you guys. Um, I will leave links to a lot of accessories um, and computer parts uh, below. Those are my preferences and hopefully that would help you, you know, in making a decision. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And as always, guys, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon. I'll see you guys in the next one.